So, Director Mulvaney, for years I've heard you rail against deficit spending. You called yourself a deficit hawk. You claimed to take our debt very seriously. You called for balanced budget amendments. You said our debt is, quote, so large as to defy description. Well, the debt's only grown since. The deficit has increased under this administration, approaching a trillion dollars this year and next. And it can't, quote, defy description because you describe it in the pages of this budget proposal. And don't even try to hold yourself to the standard you held President Obama to when you were a member of Congress. So I was prepared to come here today and call you out on the hypocrisy, but then I heard you on Sunday uh, that if you were in Congress, you would have voted against the budget legislation that President Trump just signed. So I wanted to give you a chance today to step back from the hypocrisy. If you were in Congress, would you vote, have voted for this budget that you're presenting? Um, sure, and I give the same answer I gave on Sunday, uh, which is that as a member of Congress representing the 5th District of South Carolina, I probably would have found enough shortcomings in this to vote against it, as did many members of this committee. Uh, but I'm the director of the Office of Management and Budget, and my job is to try and fund the President's priorities, which is exactly what so, we did. So you would say this is a NOAA member of Congress? Um, yeah, I, I think I've said that before. Okay. I don't think that reflects on my opinion of it as a member of the administration. <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask you one more question. I'm just trying to give an honest question to an I honest answer, it. Senator. Re so. I appreciate it. Republicans have busted our budget with trillions in tax cuts for the rich, and this budget starts asking the middle class to actually pay for that. You have said before that you would like to cut Social Security and Medicare. Can you commit to me today that you will not be asking for a penny of cuts to benefits from either of these critical programs in future budgets to pay for the president's tax cuts. And that's exactly what this budget reflects. The, the proposals that you see that touch on Social Security do not deal with old age retirement benefits, do not deal with core Social Security as we discussed last year. Uh, we try to address some reforms within Social Security disability insurance. What do you, what do you propose? Um, I think, well, in Medicare, for example, let's talk about Medicare because that was the other thing you, you asked. We do not propose any changes to any benefit, uh, any benefits any services to beneficiaries. We try to focus on lowering drug prices within Medicare. The number I've heard, by the way, a couple times today and in the press is that we propose to cut Medicare by half a trillion dollars, 500 billion. That's just not right. The number is 236 billion, and most of that is tied up in uh, drug reforms and some other proposals. For example, Senator Brandt, thank you for the time to do this, but I don't know if you know this or not, but your Medicare money, my, Medicare money that you pay in FICA that goes into the Medicare trust fund actually goes to pay for graduate um, uh, medical school tuition. It goes to pay well, for uh, bad debts from non-Medicare patients at hospitals. And we propose to move that Are you that eliminating money. that? We do. We actually move that onto another part of the budget really? so that we, we actually still pay those, but we don't pay them out of the trust fund. And a lot of folks have said, well, that's a cut to Medicare. No, it's not. It's actually improving the Medicare trust fund. And I think pay the proposals- somewhere else where you can cut it. Okay. Yeah. I got it. And we're I, out of time. Thanks. Thank you.